You are watching Sky News at midnight with the breaking news that there has been a major attack in the south of France in the city of Nice. The very latest information I'm hearing uh, that the death toll in this Nice attack, nice attack has risen to 73. This is the iTele uh, news channel citing police sources. A, a hundred are supposed said to be injured. The information we have is that a truck drove at high speed at crowds departing a Bastille Day celebration. Families who had gone to watch fireworks down on the Côte d'Azur. That we understand is the truck involved. The pictures there of the police creeping gently, slowly, cautiously towards that vehicle and another image showing that the, the windscreen is uh, splattered with gunshots as you can see. Reports there are the driver has been killed. The crowd went into panic and ran from the scene. So live pictures as you can see. Uh, let's bring in uh, a witness now. Lucy nisbet Kamaski is in Nice and saw the aftermath of the attack. Lucy, thank you for joining us. And what is a very difficult night for the city and for, for everyone there. What did you see? What did you hear? Um, well, it sounded like an attack in Beirut. I know that sounds crazy to say. And I said to my friend, this doesn't sound like fireworks. This sounds like Beirut when it's under attack. And um, all of a sudden... People were screaming in the street and they were running all to the restaurants. All the restaurants were open and people coming and we were just sitting there. And, um, and everybody came into our restaurant and the owners of the restaurant were closing the doors saying, please don't go anywhere, get in, get in to everybody. Everybody was screaming. There was a lady, um, she collapsed on the floor, um, she fainted. And, um, and we were in shock. I was just sitting there with a friend enjoying a meal um, and we were going to go down to the fireworks. But um, unfortunately, we didn't go because I needed to go to the ladies. And, um, and that's what stopped us. And that's why we stayed. Because um, obviously, there was about 15 minutes or so left. And we were literally one block away. Um, it, was, it was shocking. It was devastating. And um, I can't believe that I've come over here for a few days and I've got mixed up in something so tragic. Um, it, it was just awful. The latest pictures we're looking at show the military on the streets, in fact, as some crowds are still moving around. Are people allowed to move now? Have you been allowed to move from where you were? Because um, the word came out earlier from the local politician is to stay put. Well, yes, that's right. Um, we, well, we stayed in the restaurant and um, obviously we, we needed to go because I wasn't feeling very well. I was quite shocked about it and so was my friend and we just wanted to get out of there. We're both English girls. Um, my, my girlfriend does live here. She lives in um, uh, Saint-Tropez. Uh, Saint so we needed to drive 60 miles to get back to Saint-Tropez. So um, we, the, one of the restaurant guys um, took us and told us to turn around the block and told us exactly how to get out because the promenade was completely blocked. You weren't allowed to go down there, so we didn't quite know how to get out of Nice. So what we did was we went to the car park, and my friend was saying, please, please, let's stay here. I think we'll be safer to stay in this underground car park. And I just, it was so hot. I said, we really need to go. We really need to get home. So um, we left the car park. We asked the parking attendant how we can get out um, without taking the, um, the, um, the sea route, which is obviously all the promenade is um, where the beach is, which we knew we couldn't get down to get home. So we managed to um, take a different route and then get onto the A8, which I noticed when we were on the A8, all the police were coming from obviously the other direction, which would have been our direction coming where we were going back to Saint-Tropez and um, hundreds and hundreds of ambulances and police were coming down. And the, and the, uh, the main motorway, of course, which, which uh, traverses the, the southern part of France, a spokesman for Number 10 Downing Street said that the Prime Minister, Theresa May, was being kept up to date on events in Nice, saying that our thoughts are with all those affected by this terrible incident on what was a day of national celebration. A day of national celebration, but Lucy, as you are evidence, attracts tourists from, from everywhere and a great destination, Nice, for, for British people on holiday. 
Mm. And the sad thing about it, and know this is awful and maybe a bit selfish, but um, it spoiled. It did spoil our shopping trip. Um, I've got a, we, we bought all this lo- lovely shopping, and now I just can't be bothered with it. It just doesn't mean anything now. Well, certainly pictures that you won't have seen uh, are absolutely horrific. Pictures that are already available show the uh, the trail of carnage that this truck uh, caused. Um, and obviously this is a major, major incident. Uh, we're hearing different figures for the numbers who may have been killed in this. The president of the Nice region saying that at least 60 people have died in this truck attack on Bastille Day. Another source speaking to the iTele TV station said that up to 73 people are now thought to have died. Uh, but Lucy, what time of day did this happen? Did it happen before or after the, the fireworks celebrations? No, this was during. Um, and we... This would have happened about nine o'clock our time, which I think is um, we're an hour ahead of you. So, the oh no, actually, my friend has just said the fireworks were at, were at, were at ten thirty. So it was happening then. I, I've I've lost track of time. I'm just so shocked. Um, I'm still shaking, to be quite honest. I'm it was just. Yeah, I'm not surprised you're, you're shaking. The Interior Minister for France, Bernard Casanova, is on his way to Nice. Uh, Le Figaro newspaper is saying that several weapons, guns and grenades have been found inside the lorry that drove over a crowd, according to a local source, suggesting a premeditated terror attack. And Lucy, from what you heard from the crowd's movements, did you hear any gunfire at all? Yes, well we did, but I thought it was fireworks, because as I said, if it was 10.30, I can't remember what time we sat in this restaurant, and as I say, I didn't plan to sit in this restaurant, I planned just to go to the loo, and I, I'm sorry I'm saying that, but that is the truth, and then we were going to go down, we were one block away from the promenade, and we were going to go and watch the fireworks, and um, I texted my daughter and told her that we were, we were safe and everything was fine, but I kind of said that the toilet saved us, to be quite honest. And I know that's an awful thing to say. But I do feel that if I hadn't have gone, I would have been down there. And I don't know. And I'm one of these people that I like to get in with the crowd. So I would have liked to have seen what was going on. So I, I don't, you know, would we be here now? Would I be talking to you? Probably not. Did you um, see a sense of panic? Did you see people running past the window of the, of the restaurant you were in? No, the, the panic was, I've never seen anything like it. When I, we've had uh, the uh, minstrel here, which is when the weather, mistrel, sorry, when the weather is um, very windy, and we've had three days of it here. And um, before the attack, I would say just before the attack, there was this horrendous wind. All the tables in the restaurant, um, all the glasses were flying off the tables um, and the serviettes, everything was going on the floor. It was really strange, but it was one side of, of the road, so to the left of where I was sitting. And in the end, we chose to go in because I thought that maybe there was um, some sort of tornado and that's when the people were screaming, hundreds of them running down the street. So I thought it was part of this tornado thing, of um, uh, this terrible weather we were having here with the wind. So... At first, I wasn't aware until everybody came screaming into the restaurant and one lady collapsed. I wasn't aware what was going on. And then I realized and then somebody said there's 20 people dead. And then obviously the number went up. And as far as I know, before we left, it was 60 people and 100 injured. But I'm not quite sure what the toll really is. And was there a sense, a celebratory sense of mood before this, um, given that uh, Bastille Day is the, is the French national ho- holiday? It was, it was wonderful. Um, we arrived in the afternoon and we met such lovely people in, in shops and they were so kind to us when we were trying things on, etc. And it was just such a wonderful day. Um, and everybody was in a very good, happy mood, people smiling. It, it was, I'd never, I hadn't spent too much time in Nice, but this time it felt really special to be there. And it was just really unfortunate that the day ended as it did. Well, the, uh, the pictures of the emergency service still at the scene, still working. Obviously, you have left the area, but presumably you'll want to cut short your holiday, do you think? No, well, I, I'm, I am flying home tomorrow evening, and I just pray that everything goes well, because I'm sure there'll be more security at the airport now tomorrow. Um, but I have to go back there. I have to go back to Nice tomorrow to fly home. So I'm just praying that... Um, 
then I'm able to get home because that's what I want to do now. I don't want to be here. And that's an awful thing to say. And that's very selfish when people have lost their lives. But um, I guess I just, it really hits home and I just want to be with my children. And how will you reflect on what has happened when you get home? I think I'm probably going to cry. <laughs> I'm just so shocked. I, I'm, I'm so, so shocked, really. Um, it, it's hard to explain. Um, there's so much shock, I suppose, and the adrenaline that's rushing through my body at the moment, and I'm still shaking. I just think that um, it's shocking to do this. I mean, I just don't understand it. I never have understood it. And terrorism is is awful, and it's hard enough. It's hard enough um, getting on with your life without having all of this going on. Life's tough sometimes without killing people. Lucy Nesbitt Kamaski, um, thank goodness you're safe. Safe journey home tomorrow. Thank you very much indeed for your time. Thank you. Well, Sky's Lisa Holland joins us now. Lisa, just bring us up to date what we know so far. line that's just in, Anna, from the White House, the White House National Security Council saying that President Obama uh, has been appraised of the situation in Nice uh, and his national security team will update him as appropriate. Um, Foreign Office is saying we're in touch with the local authorities and seeking more information following this apparent attack on Bastille Day in Nice. Uh, also saying to anybody, if you're in the area, follow the instructions of the French authorities. Now, those instructions are for people to stay indoors, not go outside. I think that the big concern is always after an incident like that, like this, uh, and of course the finger of suspicion is pointing, it has to be said, towards the fact that this was some kind of terrorist incident. The big concern will be that this is not the last event of the evening, not even just the last event of the evening in Nice, uh, but that it could be further incidents throughout the country. So the entire country will be on a high state of alert at the moment. Um, interestingly, uh, Le Figaro, the uh, well-respected French newspaper, is saying that several weapons, guns and grenades have been found inside the lorry that drove uh, through that crowd, according to uh, a local source, which suggests that this was some kind of premeditated attack. Now, um, we know that the president of the Nice region has said that at least 60 people have died. There are other unconfirmed reports that that figure could be as many as 73. And what officials are now saying was a deliberate attack when a truck drove into revelers uh, in Bastille Day. Um, French radio saying this is a scene of horror. Uh, the Nice prosecutor, Jean-Michel Prette, said bodies had been strewn across uh, the roadway, a spokesman for France's interior ministry saying there are likely to be several dozen dead after that truck drove into the crowd. Um, BFM TV reporting uh, it's going to be a very high toll. International reaction coming in. President Obama, we know, has been briefed of the situation in Nice in France and his national security team will update him as appropriate. That is from the White House. Donald Trump has just said on Twitter he has postponed his news conference scheduled for Friday to announce his running mate because of the attack uh, in France. And a spokesman for Number 10 Downing Street said Prime Minister Theresa May was being kept up to, up to date on events in Nice, adding that our thoughts are with all those affected by this terrible incident on what was a day of national celebration. National celebration, Bastille Day, July the 14th. Families were down on the Promenade des Anglais to witness the, uh, the fireworks there. And certainly the, uh, the idea of an attack on beach resorts, uh, Lisa, in Italy, France and Spain, had come with warnings from Islamic State, who had also urged their supporters since September 2014 to commit acts of atrocity using vehicles. Now, so far from the French authorities, they have simply called this an attack, a major criminal attack. Uh, but uh, I suppose suspicion will always point to Islamic terrorism. Yes, and it does have, to, to use that, that well-used phrase, all the hallmarks of some kind of um, Islamist extremist attack. Um, we know that we were discussing, weren't we, Anna, in the last half hour or so, the use of this word by the French authorities of this 
being some kind of criminal attack. I, I think potentially that's a kind of word which is almost lost in translation. What they're trying to say uh, is that this was not an incident where somebody may have, for example, been taken ill at the wheel, uh, may have had a heart attack and hit their vehicle ploughed into the crowd, that they clearly believe that this was something which was um, premeditated. And the fact that they have found weaponry inside the vehicle as well, or certainly French newspapers are reporting that weapons, guns and grenades were found, um, which may well lead to people um, being concerned that this was only the start of some kind of incident tonight, that the, those weapons were to be turned on the crowds in the way that we saw them used against the crowd in the Paris attacks of November 2015, um, and also, of course, at Brussels um, airport as well. We know there was a bomb blast there uh, uh, just a few months ago, and also, of course, the attack on the metro station at Malbec um, in Brussels as well. So um, this does have all of those hallmarks of some kind of spectacular. We know that the French authorities had admitted uh, within recent days, in fact, according again to Le Figaro, they published a report just uh, yesterday, uh, a testimony from the head of France's domestic security agency, essentially saying that he feared that Islamic State was what he called uh, trying to mutate its terror threat. In other words, it, it was looking, of new, looking at new ways of carrying out its attacks. It wasn't just prepared to stick to the confines of the traditional, if you like, the sort of car bombs, the suicide bombs, um, that they were looking for ways where they could actually spare their own attackers, perhaps carrying out remotely detonated, improvised attacks as well. Um, so looking for something new, looking for something fresh. And it has to be said for anybody that was following the football I know so many people breathed a huge security sigh of relief that they had passed off uh, without major incident, that there had been such a level of high security and there had been a high level of concern amongst many fans as well that, that were they taking their life in their hands to go to these football stadiums. We know, of course, that the Stade de France uh, in Paris was one of those key locations which came under attack from Islamist terrorists in November of last year with that concerted um, round of attacks and so um, therefore there was concern but it, it, it is vintage Islamic State to watch people breathe a sigh of relief and then just when their guard is down and on Bastille Day attack somewhere else not the capital France but um, hundreds of miles away in the south of France in this resort Nice when they know that people um, will be having a, a relaxed day enjoying uh, their history enjoying that warm lovely summer, summer evening anyone that's been on the promenade in the south of France will be familiar with so to attack in a different location and in a very different way as well. Well, the, uh, the live pictures we just saw there show that heavily armed police officers are on the streets. We've seen military too. Uh, clearly, we heard during the Euro 2016 championships that Lisa was talking about there that extra police were to be on the beaches. Uh, but we do know also that uh, France was due to rescind its state of emergency at the end of July. That now, I presume, will not happen. Francois Hollande cutting short a private visit to Avignon in the south of France to head back to Paris to, uh, to the interior ministry crisis cell as they have put it and we also know that the French interior minister Bernard Casanova is heading to Nice himself the word that we've had certainly uh, from people there is uh, it was a scene of horror the Nice prosecutor Jean-Michel Pret said bodies are strewn about along the roadway the famous roadway of the promenade des Anglais where families had gathered to watch the fireworks to celebrate Bastille Day more on this breaking news story after this break <laughs> 